In general, in this channel we review aircraft that, either due to their offensive capabilities or their design, have stood out in the history of aviation. This is not the case with the F-104 Starfighter, a controversial fighter jet that, due to its numerous technical problems, has earned the nickname Flying Coffin, or even worse, the Widowmaker. Of course it had positive characteristics, but you will surely be surprised to learn about the incredible operational failures it presented, and how it claimed the lives of hundreds of soldiers. For this new military aviation video, we recommend you wear a helmet, because it will be a bumpy flight. In December 1951, Lockheed Corp designer Clarence Kelly Johnson was returning from a meeting with U.S. Air Force pilots with one goal, to design the fastest ship on the planet. Lockheed approved his team's project in 1952, and by 1953 the U.S. Army had ordered two test prototypes. The first XF-104 flew within a year, and was recognizable by its missile-like fuselage along with extremely short, broad wings. This version received some improvements to resolve landing and stability issues, while General Electric J-79 engines with afterburners were installed. The result was the basis for the F-104A which entered service in 1958, breaking numerous speed, acceleration and climb records. Even so, problems did not take long to appear, but first, let's get to know the main character of this story in detail. The F-104 Starfighter was 16.6 .6 meters long, with a wingspan of 6.6 .6 meters and a height of 4.1 meters. Its empty weight was 6,350 kilograms, with a maximum takeoff mass of 13,166 kilograms. What was really impressive was its speed, which reached 2,459 kilometers per hour, something totally unprecedented that earned it the nickname the missile with a man inside. Its combat range was 680 kilometers, and it had interesting weapons for attack operations. Its main weapon was a 20 mm M61A1 Vulcan, a six-barrel rotary unit that held 725 rounds. This allowed a few seconds of fire, but they were more than enough to destroy almost any possible target of the time. In addition, the F-104 had seven hardpoints with a capacity of 1,800 kilograms. These could house four AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, as well as smaller bombs, rockets, and even countermeasure systems. A few months after its commissioning in the 83 Squadron, the F-104 had problems with its motorization and with the M61A1 cannon, for which reason all the units had to be stationed on the ground for repowering. Consequently, the J-79 GE-3B was chosen as a replacement. In that period, interest from the U.S. Air Force waned, and the initial order of 722 aircraft dropped to just 170. With the Vietnam War came the first great challenge for this controversial ship. In April 1965, a tactical squadron equipped with starfighters arrived at Da Nang Air Base with the mission of escorting Lockheed EC-130s. As a secondary mission, they were also to carry out ground attacks and provide close support to U.S. troops. The service of the F-104 in Indochina ended after just two years, after 5,000 takeoffs in which a total of 14 aircraft were lost, several of which succumbed to ground fire. One of them suffered technical problems and was destroyed by a Chinese J-6 near Hainan Island. The meager performance further reduced American interest in the ship, but the Starfighter found a new operational niche, NATO allies. The transaction was dubbed the deal of the century, and one of the nations that received the most F-104s was Germany, which reinforced the Luftwaffe with the American model. The variant was called the F-104G, and was promoted as an all-weather fighter aircraft, heavier than the original model. German starfighters got off on the wrong foot when, in June 1962, during an introductory practice, four of these planes crashed in formation, killing their pilots. It was just the beginning of a history plagued with technical failures, accidents, and dozens of deaths. 
By operating at high speeds with an unstable design, to which the weight of fuel tanks was added to improve range, the F-104 became very sensitive to pilot error. The slightest misstep could turn into a tragedy. In fact, by mid-1966, just four years after its introduction, there were 61 accidents in the German Air Force, with a total of 35 pilots killed. The truth is that the purchase of these ships had political motivations unrelated to the qualities of the device. Over time, it emerged that Lockheed had bribed German officials to push sales of the F-104 to the European market, in the face of an obvious loss of interest from the United States. The commander of the Luftwaffe, Wernher Panitsky, revealed these facts, and therefore he was removed from his post and replaced by Johannes Steinhoff. Steinhoff halted the use of the Starfighters to fit new ejection systems to prevent accidents, but this proved to be useless. Between 1968 and 1972 about 20 F-104s crashed per year. Later, the figure was reduced to 10 per year until its departure from service in 1983. In total, 292 ships out of 900 were lost, which left the terrible balance of 115 pilots dead. You see why the nickname Widowmaker is completely justified. Other countries that suffered similar problems were Canada, with almost 110 planes crashed, usually due to bad weather, one of the many Achilles heels of the F-104. Italy was one of the last operators of this ship, until it was withdrawn from service in 2004. The Italian starfighters did not perform as disastrous, but still about 40% were lost due to technical difficulties or minor accidents. One of the main shortcomings of the F-104 was the size of the wings, which could not accommodate the landing system or fuel tanks. Everything had to adhere to the fuselage, reducing maneuverability and taking away stability when flying at high speed. What is the point of having an aircraft capable of reaching Mach 2 if its flight is completely chaotic? Another problem is that, by not having fuel tanks, the operational range of the F-104 was severely reduced. In this period of military aviation, the ability to cover large areas had become a central condition when developing a ship. Lastly, the Starfighter had outdated avionics and its radar was not really useful in adverse conditions, so it could only use its Sidewinder missiles on sunny days and perfect clarity. The F-104 Starfighter is definitely one of the great failures of North American military aviation, and its consequences were felt more deeply within the German Air Force, where it claimed the lives of hundreds of pilots. Beyond its impressive speed of Mach 2, and its more than respectable firepower, the Starfighter's design was a death sentence for even the most experienced pilots. Its infamous reputation is more than justified. Thanks for staying until the end. If you want to know the history of other ships, leave your suggestion in the comment box below. We'll meet again in the next episode of Military Aviation.